What is silver recovery and how can you do it? Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -hmm. That's not better in my head. Silver recovery is the method of retrieving the silver that gets dissolved in your fixer from your film and prints, and then taking that silver and getting it refined and purchased so that you can get some of the cost of your darkroom back. Now there are two methods to do silver recovery. One is metallic replacement. This can be done with something called a trickle tank. Kodak used to make them. Uh, they're basically just a plastic bucket, like a two and a half gallon, I believe there was a five gallon size. And inside that bucket was really nothing but just steel wool. I believe you can make one of, uh, for yourself using just number zero steel wool. Just pack it full in kind of a donut shape. Then you have an inlet so that you can pour in your spent fixer and there is an overflow outlet. So once the bucket is full of fixer, then as you pour more in, some will come out of the overflow. And over time, the silver in the spent fixer will replace the metal, the iron of the steel wool itself. You can't use stainless steel. It won't replace that. It has to be just plain steel. It will replace the steel in the steel wool. And once it's done uh, and complete, which can take several months, even maybe a, a year or two, depending on how much fixer you use, then you would send this to a refiner. They would retrieve the silver out of that and then give you some of the money back. The other method is the electroplate process in which you are plating an electric diode with, or a cathode, I don't know, something electric which would actually attract the silver ions. It would plate on this rod and then you would send that in. So a product like that might be something like silver magnet. So you would put the device itself in your container of spent fixer and the metal rod inside would then attract the silver out of solution and plate it. Once it was no longer able to plate, you would send this in for a replacement and usually the refinery would pay you for the silver that they retrieve. Now these are very simple to use but you do have to make sure that you have full saturation of silver in your fixer. If not you can easily burn the electric uh, method out before you ever even really get any plating on there or if you're using the trickle tank metal replacement method, then it's possible all you would do is just rust the uh, steel wool and not actually replace it with silver. And then you're just wasting your time. So to make sure you have fully spent fixer, then what I recommend you do, when you mix up a working solution, then label the bottle with either print fixer or film fixer, depending on what you're using. Put the date that you are mixing this up so you know how old it is. Especially with sodium thiosulfate, ammonium thiosulfate will do this too. They will, over time, if you're not using it fast enough, change to a sulfur compound and it'll start to smell like rotten eggs. So keep a date on there so you know how old it is. And put a label that allows you to keep track of how many prints you run through it. Sodium thiosulfate fixer, such as Kodak fixer, in this case, just a plain sodium thiosulfate fixer that I mix up myself, which you can see in my other video on how to save money. You can get <clears throat> 100 8 by 10 prints in one gallon of fixer. So if you are printing, for example, 16 by 20, that is the equivalent of four eight by 10 sheets. So you would only get one quarter the capacity. That would be 25 prints of 16 by 20. You do need to also keep track of your test prints, your test strips, and that sort of thing. 
So use this up to capacity, just mark it on the label. Once you have reached full capacity, and you can use it over and over, then pour this into a larger container, such as a five gallon bucket from your uh, big box hardware store, and then either use the plating method, or if you decided to make your own triple tank, then you would simply wait for the process to occur. Now, if you're not into making your own, and you want to uh, perhaps try one of these, then you may want to contact John Nanian. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, your last name, John. <clears throat> and I'll put his email in the description of this video because he does make available both the silver magnet method and trickle tanks. There are instructions on how to make your own, but they are not necessarily cost effective once you purchase all the necessary parts. So you may decide that you just want to purchase one. In which case, I'll make sure that you have a way to contact him to get a hold of one. Once that is full, you can send them to a refiner. Just do a quick Google search of silver refiners, and often you can send those. The trickle tank method particular is often used by dental offices to save costs. So there are still companies out there that deal with refining these, and then they will send you uh, some money back for those tanks. How much? I don't know. I've not actually finished using mine in order to tell you how much I have gotten back. So if you have any experience with this, please leave a comment. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will continue to find ways to save you money in the darkroom, as well as do how-to videos on darkroom uh, materials and techniques, lighting, and shooting.